How to sell more on Amazon. That's the burning question. We all want to increase our product sales. This is my seven tips on how to do just that. Also, it's applying these seven tips that led me to selling over $496,000 worth of product in December alone on Amazon. So stay tuned and we'll get right into it. Before we get started, I just want to let you know that my goal with this channel is to produce weekly videos that provide real, valuable content to help you succeed online. So take a quick second and just subscribe to the channel so that you'll be notified every time I produce a new video. Also, if you have any questions at all, just leave a comment below and I'll gladly answer them. Now, on to the video. Okay, over here at the computer, going to run through my top seven tips on how to sell more on Amazon. I uh, wanted to first start out by saying uh, something in the news very recently um, was that Kohl's is partnered with Amazon and they will start accepting Amazon returns in all of their stores nationwide. And that is huge. They're going to start this uh, in July, which will also consequently be Amazon's 25th anniversary from just being a small little bookstore online. Look to see where that sucker has grown in 25 years. But this is going to be monumental for Amazon for us to be able to, as consumers, for us to be able to take back products to our local Kohl's store and not have to pay shipping. Uh, I think that's pretty amazing. Uh, it's going to be amazing for Amazon. It's going to be great for Kohl's. So anyways, just a little, uh, little side note there. But getting into my first of seven tips, my first tip is reviews. And just want to show this article from Search Engine Land that 88% of consumers say that they trust online reviews as much as they trust personal recommendations from their friends. Uh, if we come over to this site, Ecom Engine, your reviews are so critical to your uh, listing being shown and where you end up on the results page. There are 90% of most people don't even leave a review on Amazon. So using an automated piece of software like Feedback 5 is paramount to making sure that you get as many reviews as possible. Now, I did do a whole video on a review, Amazon review tutorial should be in a card somewhere up here in the corner. So be sure and check that out for a more complete uh, kind of understanding of this. But you want to use this uh, system. It'll automatically send out uh, emails to your customers in sort of a drip sequence, however you choose to set it up. Uh, you don't want to overdo it because uh, you don't want to risk uh, you know, getting in trouble, but you might send a few emails out that either provide tracking information or maybe a tip or a trick on how to use your product or how to clean your product or something along those lines. Something that's very valuable and very useful generally will lead to a uh, you know, good chance of getting some positive feedback uh, made on Amazon for your product listing. Also, if you have somebody that you know that's uh, maybe local to you or a family member or friend, somebody that has bought your product uh, and they're going to leave a review on Amazon for you. What was really, really nice is if you could ask them to leave a review with photos, a couple of photos for your for their review for your product. Uh, and even better yet is a short video would be great because when consumers leave reviews that include either photos or videos, you can see it right up at the top of the review results. So it's very, very powerful stuff uh, if you can get that done. Okay, tip number two is to be sure and drive outside traffic to your product page on Amazon. Uh, you want to make those sales. Now, you don't want to just blindly drive traffic and forward traffic to your product page and then people get lost and click and go somewhere else. You want to set up a campaign, whether it is a blog or a content campaign, some free source of traffic or a paid source, whether you're running Google ads or YouTube ads or Facebook ads or what have you. You want to, and always when you drive traffic to your product page, you want to first drive traffic to a landing page and you can set up with a, a place like lead pages, super easy to set up and use them to set up a very simple landing page where you will collect people's name and email address. You will collect this in exchange for giving them a discount code to your product. So when somebody signs up, they click through, they sign up, you email them instantly, email them a one-time use code, land on your page, and this will really encourage them to buy your product before they get distracted in the Amazon marketplace. But 
driving external traffic is key and paramount to increasing your uh, rankings and selling more on Amazon. One, one little side note, when you're driving people to your landing page, you want to include a uh, Facebook pixel on there so that you're collecting that data then you can do that to create lookalike audiences or remarketing campaigns or so many other things on Facebook advertising um, that will ultimately help uh, lower your ad spend and increase your sales on Amazon. Okay, my third tip is to use Amazon's own pay-per-click uh, system. So if we come up here and go to tools, I love tools. So if we come up here, you'll see that you have some sponsored results right here from DeWalt and uh, here's sponsored, sponsored. So you're starting to see that you can run ads and put your product at the top of the listing. Um, this is going to help drive sales tremendously. And what I would recommend doing is start with an automatic pay-per-click campaign and Amazon will in turn use keywords that it thinks are best for your campaign and it will automate this whole system. Now set this up with a small budget because you wanna do some initial testing. And after about a week, you want to go back and look and see what your best performing keywords are. You'll then take those keywords and extract them out of the campaign and put them into a manual bidding campaign. Not an automatic like you did set up, but you're going to put them in a manual campaign. Now, if your return on ad spend is in line with what your profit margin is and is acceptable, then you want to scale up. You want to scale this up. If it's not in line with what's acceptable to you, then you want to do some more testing and test some more keywords. But using Amazon pay-per-click is another uh, imminent thing that you have to do to increase sales on Amazon. Okay, the next tip on my list, number four, is product images. I talk about it all the time, and it's nothing new. You're like, yeah, 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 I have to have product images. I understand that, but they are critical. I wrote down all the things that I think are important because I didn't want to miss out on anything. Images are super, super critical. So if you're selling your own product, you're going to have your own pictures taken. If you're selling a product that you're getting from a manufacturer or a wholesaler, don't use the manufacturer's picture because everybody else selling that is going to be using the manufacturer's picture. So you want to create a unique listing. You're going to have to bundle it or change it, do something so that you can have a, 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 a unique listing and use your own product images. Now, to do, when you're gonna do this, you want to use killer, killer photography. If you are not good with a camera or you, or even remotely think you're not good, you wanna hire this out. You can go to Fiverr, uh, maybe there's a local um, photographer that you know, something along those lines, but you wanna get super high quality pictures taken for your listing. You want to try to use, and let me just click into one of these here. You want to try to get, uh, here you go, shots that are being used, that your product is being used. You want to show it in use. I know it's boring to show a screwdriver in use, but depending on your product, whatever it is, you want to show it in use. If you can show it in a, in, in a light or in a way that shows a person's head or smiling face and things like this, I think it's even better, but definitely show it being used. If you can shoot it from unique angles that make it that help differentiate it or show the differentiation uh, of your product over your competition, then that's even better. You want to highlight the things that make it better. Maybe uh, you have a, a thicker clasp that won't break over your competition. Make sure you really take a picture of that and show the difference. Maybe it's a side by side, ours versus the competition, how it's thin and weak and maybe broken, um, something along those lines. You want to show in one of your images exactly what the, the consumer is going to be getting. Just like in this picture, you wanna show, I'm getting this carry case, here are all the tools, here's another breakdown of exactly what is in it. Uh, last, you want to, not last, second to last, you wanna put your best pictures first. Put your best pictures at the top, because uh, a lot of times people won't scroll through and see all of the pictures. And then lastly, when you're taking these pictures, go back to uh, the screen and do and look and see what your com uh, competitors are doing. See what their pictures look like and always try to make your pictures a little better, a little more unique, that special angle, you know, all of the things that I just described, make your picture stand out. And it is probably images are probably the single largest factor uh, for getting your product clicked on and ultimately purchased. All right. Number five, number five is all about pricing. So, when you, you're starting out, you think, oh my goodness, uh, you know, how, what do I price my product at? 
you know, I know you have a good idea of what your uh, costs are and what your pro uh, profit margin needs to be, et cetera, et cetera. But you don't want to price it too high to where you are priced out. You don't want to price it too low because you don't want to leave any money on the table. So one of the things that you can do is, all right, let me click on uh, one of these toolkits. I'll click on this Crescent one, Crescent Wrench set. I don't like this uh, title at all, but uh, that's a different topic. That's SEO title topic. So let's steal this um, ASIN right out of here. I'm going to copy it, copy, and I'm going to go to camel, camel, camel com, and I'm going to paste this right in here, hit enter, and it's going to pull up over the last period of time, it's going to pull up what average prices for this product are. And if I scroll down a little bit, I can see that the lowest price that this product sold for was $74.99 and the highest was $169. So right now it's at about $104. Um, this is going to give me a good idea of where I need to be in the market. You can never just look at the product page and take a snapshot of this and say, okay, that's the price or uh, whatever. You need to know, uh, is this seasonally? Uh, are they testing out different things? But what is the average price for this product? So that again, you're not priced out from selling and you're not leaving money on the table. Okay, tip number six is probably my favorite and it's one that you won't hear uh, from a lot of different people talk about this. But mobile traffic is taking over the internet, guys. <laughs> uh, there are upwards of 70%. Here's an article from Time Magazine. 70% of people shop on Amazon using their smartphones or their tablets as opposed to computers. So what does your listing look like on a mobile uh, a mobile platform. You know, you always have to have a, uh, if you have your own website, you have to have a responsive website for mobile traffic, et cetera, et cetera. You know, in the last several years, how important mobile, the emphasis on mobile has become. Well, if we come into one of these listings, I'm going to copy the URL, where's copy, and I'm going to go over to this uh, mobile emulator page, paste. I'm going to tell it that I'm on an iPhone 10. And then let's take a peek and see what this page looks like on mobile. So one of the things that you have to be careful of is sometimes Amazon will truncate this if it's too long. I've seen them truncate it if it's over about 80 or 90 characters. So you want to be careful of that. And if that's the case with your listing, you want to make sure that your best keywords, your best part of the title is shown first so that somebody on a mobile device gets the whole title or gets at least enough of it that they need to. If we come on down, I want to show you one other thing. So here's the price and things. If we come back over here, here's the price and the things that we're used to. Um, here's all those uh, bullet points that we've always been told to really focus on and provide value and uh, detail in our bullet points. And then we come down here and here's the product description, which is a really nice product description. But if I scroll down, I'm going to come down here and the first thing on a mobile device is is going to show is the product description and we have to scroll way oops rolling up we have to scroll way 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 down to get to the bullet points most people won't even read your bullet points your coveted precious bullet points won't even be seen because they're so far down and buried on a mobile device so keep this in mind these people have their description uh, written really really well and formatted really really well um, you can see how all this is if most people just write some short description keyword stuff that have a just about a paragraph worth of things you need to format it in such a way that it's shown add your own bullet points in the detail section so that it's super easy to read use spacing and things like that so that the formatting is very easy to read on a mobile device because a lot of people will never even see your bullet points and item number seven is to provide so much more value for your product than what the competition is doing. Uh, if it's, uh, let me just click into this one. If it's, um, I don't really like this one, Home Toolkit. Let me do this. Home Toolkit. Let's see. Uh, where's one? Let's see what this looks like. So Home Toolkit, for example. You want to uh, maybe provide uh, in a bundle, uh, something that has more value, something that your competition doesn't have, maybe a shoulder strap for the bag. Um, if, well, here's a shoulder strap, so it does come with a shoulder strap, but you see what I mean. Provide 
that go that extra mile, throw in that extra thing. If maybe you're selling sunglasses, you want to uh, have sunglasses plus a carrying case plus a little wipe cloth, and then maybe also have some little things that help zip it around to your head. If you're a fisherman and you're a boater, um, then those come in really handy so you don't drop your sunglasses in the water. But try to think about going that extra step. Those types of add-ons don't really cost much at all. And they could mean all the difference in selling your product instead of them going to a competitor. So that is tip number seven. I hope that you found some good value in these tips and tricks. Let me know in the comment section if you make some of these changes, how that impacts your sales on Amazon. Also, don't forget I have a 30 page free ebook on how I launch knockout products on Amazon. There's a free and instant access download um, just below in the description. So click and get a copy of that for free today and I will see you on the next video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to be notified of future videos and don't forget to like this video. Now watch that video next. Go ahead, watch that video.